I'm about to blow your mind right now. You probably couldn't tell just by looking at me, but I'm actually not a 61 year old grandfather from Michigan. Okay, maybe you already guessed that. But when applying for credit, that could be the profile of someone stealing my identity. And as long as the thief had my sensitive data, no creditor would be able to tell the difference. Let's talk about what identity theft is, look at some of the warning signs, and go over some tips you can use to protect yourself from threats. Hey y'all, welcome back to NerdWallet, I'm Nikita. You've heard of identity theft concerns for years, and the buzzword being thrown out frequently only means that criminals are getting sneakier. The Federal Trade Commission estimates that 9 million identities are stolen each year. But the reality is not everyone reports their info being stolen, so the real number is likely a lot higher. Identity theft means someone has used your sensitive data, like your social security number or birth date, to pose as you or steal from you. With your data, thieves can drain your bank accounts, open new credit lines, open utility services, use your insurance to get medical treatments, or give police your name and address when they are arrested. Wild, right? Typically, once a criminal has your information, they can exploit it in a few ways. Here are five of the most common. One, credit identity theft. This has been the most common and occurs when a criminal uses info, like your social and birth date, to open up new lines of credit. If you see an unexpected change on your credit report or to your credit score, or if you start receiving debt collection notices or court judgments you aren't familiar with, these are all signs your credit may have been stolen. Two, account takeover. This is when a criminal uses personal data to access your financial accounts, then changes the passwords and address so you don't have access. If you receive an email or text from your financial institutions that references a password or email change to your account that you didn't initiate, it could be a big warning sign of an identity thief gaining access to your account. Three, child identity theft. This occurs when criminals steal a child's identity and apply for credit in their name. This is particularly concerning since, in most cases, it won't be discovered until the child starts applying for college loans or other types of credit. If your child starts receiving credit card offers or calls about late payments, they may be victims. Four, taxpayer identity theft. Happens when thieves use stolen social security numbers to file a tax return and steal your tax refund or credit. If you're unable to e-file your taxes because someone else has already filed under that social, or if you get a notice from the IRS about activity you aren't familiar with, it could be a big warning sign. Five, synthetic identity theft. This happens when criminals use a mishmash of different identity details to build a fake consumer using a social security number, usually of a child or a made up number, and combine it with a name and address. They use this fake profile to apply for loans and credit cards and make payments on the accounts until the credit limit grows. They then max out the accounts and disappear. Really scary stuff, right? Curious about how a thief can get your identity in the first place? There are a few ways. There are the accidental ways, like when you lose your wallet or you get hacked while surfing the web on public Wi-Fi. There are the brazen ways, like thieves stealing your mail, your purse, or garbage to get your account numbers or your social security number. And then there are the sneakier ways, like emails and phone calls that trick you into releasing personal information to criminals or your account information being stolen from clinics and businesses. This last point has had a big surge lately, by the way. If you're like me and you feel like you're always getting emails from companies you've done business with warning of recent data breaches, it's not just us. More than 4,100 publicly disclosed breaches happened in 2021 alone, which added up to about 22 billion records being exposed. This reality means your information has likely already been exposed, which I know is a little bit terrifying to think about. So how can you protect yourself? For starters, freeze your credit with all three of the major credit bureaus. This will restrict access to your records so new credit files can't be open. The freeze with Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion is really easy and free too. I froze all three of mine online in less than 15 minutes, but you can also do it by phone or by mail. You'll need to lift the freezes when you want to apply for credit, which again, is really simple to do online. It's also a good idea to freeze your child's credit too. The process does take a bit longer than freezing your own since you'll need to send in documents, but the protection for your kiddos would be worth the extra effort. Next, use strong passwords. And I know how annoying it can be to create passwords with their crazy complexity requirements. Y'all, I actually had to come up with a 15 digit password the other day that incorporated at least two special characters, uppercases, it couldn't have two of the same digits in a row and just a bunch of other specifics. But these complex passwords are hard to hack. A password manager or an authenticator app can help you track and manage these. 
Also, check your mail. I know so many people who don't check their mail on a regular basis. It was me, I was people. And stolen mail is an easy path to your identity. Sign up for informed delivery through USPS so you know what mail you should be expecting and then check your box regularly. Also be sure to have your mail held if you'll be traveling. Another thing is shred. Any bank statements or other personal information that could be found by thieves rummaging through your trash should be shredded. This includes junk mail for pre-approved credit accounts as well. Be skeptical. Scammers can make phone calls and send texts claiming to work for the government or other businesses. Some of these calls and messages look and sound more legit than others. Be skeptical and hop online to search for the legitimate company's website and contact information. Only contact the companies through these official contact sources and don't open attachments or click links as they may be malware. Another thing is to be sure you check your credit reports regularly. If there are changes that you didn't initiate on your credit report, you'll want to know right away so you can take quick action. And the best way to do this is by checking your reports regularly. All three of the major credit reporting bureaus give consumers access to free credit reports weekly through the end of the year. You can access this by visiting annualcreditreport.com. You can also sign up for a free credit report and score from NerdWallet to receive alerts when there are any changes to your credit. And finally, you may want to consider identity theft protection services. For a fee, these services will protect your privacy, among other services. Be sure you look into the specific protections they are offering and make sure you aren't already receiving free identity protection benefits through your financial institutions or other accounts. So, you know some ways to identify and lower your risks of identity theft, but what do you do if your identity is stolen? IdentityTheft.gov is run by the Federal Trade Commission and is a one-stop shop for information on reporting theft. Start there and follow the recommended steps. Depending on the nature of the theft, you may also need to report it to your local police department, the postal service, the IRS, or the credit bureaus. If your credit card was lost or stolen or used without your knowledge, you should also go directly to the card issuer to report it. Okay, Nikita, I reported it. Now what? The report usually starts with an investigation and the next steps will vary based on the type of theft. A credit card issuer will usually replace the cards with new ones that have a different number. Taxpayer identity and other types of benefits thefts usually take longer to resolve. Whatever type of theft it was, make sure you keep detailed notes about phone conversations and save all related emails. Look, you know how sometimes you're thinking to yourself, hmm, maybe I'll buy a camera. So you start searching the web and then the next time you log on to Instagram, they're advertising a dozen different cameras to you. And you have that thought like, they're such stalkers. I'm never thinking about buying anything ever again. Treat your sensitive data with that same level of respect. Be stingy about where you share it and with whom. Keep an eye on your credit reports, protect your kids' data and be safe out there y'all. Just a reminder to keep your guard up when there are trendy financial topics going on. Last year saw a huge bump in student loan forgiveness scams with phony sites being set up to steal hopeful borrowers' social security information or assessing hefty application fees. Remember my earlier note, always be skeptical when your personal data is concerned.